Thank you, Rick and Nancy. Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. We'll begin in verse 19. Acts chapter 11, begin in verse 19. As I mentioned this morning, uh, next Sunday morning, we will continue, of course, the uh, narrative of Jesus walking on the water. We uh, did not have the time to include uh, Peter's escapade, and that's going to be next. We will we'll devote the whole service to uh, the Apostle Peter's effort on walking on water, because there's a whole lot of messages in there for all of us. But for tonight, Acts chapter 11, and we want to begin in verse 19. Would you stand as the scriptures read, please? Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but to the Jews only. But some of them were from Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, or to the Greeks, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them. A great number believed and turned to the Lord. The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. And they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. And when he came and seen the grace of God was glad, and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. A great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas de departed to Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Let's pray together, please. Father, thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us biblical patterns of how to act and work as a church and as believers. We ask that we would take these to heart as we look at this passage of scripture. Show us what we can do, just as one person, how we can make a big difference in our world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. This, of course, is early in the church. A lot has happened since Jesus had ascended into heaven. A lot was going on at Jerusalem, and then there was persecution of the church, and people were scattered everywhere. Of course, those who were persecuting the church, when they saw people scattering, pro probably thought they had won. Because these people were scattered, and that would be the end of this person they had been hearing about Jesus and his followers. Now we've scattered them, and now that we've scattered them, they can't meet anymore, and it'll just be over. But it says... They were scattered, and as they were scattering, they preached Jesus Christ. Some of them started preaching to the Jews only, but then some of the people who were from Cyprus and Cyrene, they came to Antioch, and they started preaching to non-Jewish people. When it says the Hellenists, it was talking about Greeks, but the Greeks included just anybody that was not part of the Jewish Hebrew nation. Because it was, of course, Greek was the language there. Antioch didn't seem to be too far from Jerusalem. It was about 300 miles. Not a long way now, but it was a long way then. But here's the difference. Antioch was a port city. So people from all over the world were there, not just from Greece. So when it talks about the Greeks or the Grecians or the Hellenists, this is talking about anybody besides Jewish people. It could be people from anywhere on the globe because it was a port city. So we're talking about believers from any number of false religions were coming to know Jesus Christ. This was all foreign to the disciples because all of them came from the Jewish faith. And now this was something like these people weren't Jews first and now they're believing in our Messiah they wanted to investigate. They wanted to see what was going on because big news of all these non-Jewish people coming to know the Lord, they needed to send somebody to investigate. So they sent Barnabas. Why would they send Barnabas? Well, look at his credentials in verse 24. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. Three things here. He was a good man. That meant Barnabas had right behavior. 
You, you can't call a man a good man unless he lives a good life. So from the outside, it was obvious Barnabas had good, upstanding, moral behavior. He was a spirit-led man. He was full of the Holy Spirit. And I like what somebody said. Being full of the Holy Spirit is not necessarily me getting more of the Holy Spirit, but it's the Holy Spirit getting more of me and being led by the Spirit. It says of Barnabas, he was full of faith. He had a genuine faith. Well, how did he put all this into action? In verse 23, when he came, he investigated and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. What did he do when he got there? He saw this church that was growing, all these people coming to know the Lord from all different walks of life, all different cultures, and it says he encouraged them. Now the word encourage means a lot of different things. The word encourage means to motivate. When somebody finds some motivation to keep on doing what they're doing, and a lot of times that's a coach's job to encourage the players to be their best and to do their best. Encouragement means strengthen, to strengthen someone in their resolve to further their goals. But then we also know this, to encourage also means to comfort. A lot of times if you'll go to the greeting card rack and you'll see something like encouragement when it comes to a category of cards and you pick them up and it is specifically cards that are sent to people who are having a tough time. And to encourage people who are having a tough time, you're coming alongside them and comforting them. So the word encouragement can be a lot of different things. It can comfort somebody who is down and out and on a low limb, or it can motivate somebody that's already moving ahead and strengthen somebody that's already doing something. Barnabas encouraged, and obviously he taught them. Because it says of Barnabas, he encouraged them that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. He communicated some things to them, didn't he? So he was a busy man. And the result is this, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Did you catch that? What was the end result of his encouragement? The end result of his encouragement, however form it took, is that more people begin to be saved. And the believers gained a new name. The believers were called Christians first at Antioch. Now, People at Antioch loved to give people sarcastic nicknames. That was not a positive name, but we took it, didn't we? Because Christians mean the folk of Christ. I'll take that. And so we're called Christians because of what happened at Antioch. And Antioch grew because of the encouragement of Barnabas. Well, Barnabas wanted to share this. So Barnabas finds a partner. Barnabas left and went to Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And for a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. So we understand he finds a partner. And they spent a year at Antioch doing exactly what he was doing before. But now he's got a helper and his name is Saul. And what we find is a development and a change of the status of Antioch. Antioch started out as a church plant. These people traveled up to Antioch. There was no church in town. So they planted a church, if you want to put it in modern day language. They planted the church at Antioch. It was a mission church that came from the people that were scattered from Jerusalem. Now, the church plant changed its, its status and now they become a sending missionary church. If you look in chapter 13, verse 1, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. 
As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And having fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. So we know the work they had called them didn't involve the work at Antioch. It involved missionary work. Classic example of international missions. When we think of mission work, isn't that what you think about? Somebody see it being sent to a church or to a city. A church begins to grow and then that church gets to the point where it's mature enough to send its own missionaries. Classic international missions. So we say something big came out of that. But now here's the question. How did Barnabas know about Saul? How would he know that Saul was in Tarsus? How would he know about this man to even go and get him? Well, it all has to do with this word called encouragement. If you'll turn back to nine, chapter 9, verse 26. Saul of Tarsus, of course, was persecuting the church. God stopped the unstoppable and loved the unlovable and saved the unsavable. And now Saul, the persecutor, is a believer. And he had to get out of Damascus because they plotted to kill him because he was preaching so boldly. And in verse 26 of Acts chapter 9, when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But, that means a game changer here, Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, how he had spoken to him, how he preached boldly in the baskets in the name of Jesus. So he was with them at Jerusalem coming in and going out. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Hellenists, the other Greeks, when they attempted, but they attempted to kill him. When the brethren found out, they brought him down to Caesarea, sent him out to Tarsus. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee and Samaria had peace and were edified. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. So here is the picture. Paul tried to join the disciples. Now the English there makes it sound like it was a one-time thing. He tried to join the disciples. They said, no way. And you could understand that. They were suspicious of him. They didn't believe him. They thought he was a spy. They thought he was still Saul the murderer. And Saul tried to join the disciples. But the Greek rendition of this verb means that it was a continuous action. Paul continued to try to join the disciples several times. I don't know how many times, but he tried and he tried. So we could say Paul was trying to join the disciples. So it became the, the point that he was not able to join the disciples. But one man saw the value in Saul, Barnabas. And it says Barnabas took him and he spoke up for him. He spoke up for him to the church at Jerusalem. And he spoke up for him to the church at Jerusalem. And he said, I'm going to tell you this man's story. They wouldn't even hear his story. He said, let me tell you his story. How the Lord has turned his life around. How he saved him on the Damascus road. And then let me show you the evidence of that. How he was preaching so boldly at Damascus. They, they ran him out of town. He had to run for his life. This man is the real deal. And then it says, and he was with them at Jerusalem. Why was he with them at Jerusalem? Because Saul, uh, Barnabas spoke up on behalf of Saul. You see, it's important when somebody knows that you're in the corner. And saw, uh, Barnabas saw the value of showing him that somebody was his in quarter. Somebody believed in his worth. Somebody spoke up in his behalf. As he was facing doubt and criticism. And it shows us here, and watch this, big things can come 
from seemingly small gestures of encouragement. It may have seemed to be a small thing that Barnabas would take him and introduce him to the church and speak up on his behalf. But what happened? Saul was with them. Saul spoke boldly. And of course, the immediate aftermath of this is that the church began to grow. And it says they were multiplied. They were multiplied. Churches grew everywhere. Why? Because Saul's ministry began to develop because Barnabas encouraged him and spoke up for him and showed him, I'm supporting you and I believe in what you're doing. And that's important. But it has started a lot earlier. And we back up to chapter 4, verse 36. But let's, let's think about this for a minute. Saul was a murderer. Saul was a persecutor of the church. They didn't believe Saul and they were afraid of him. They were terrified of him. And now Barnabas speaks up on his behalf. And now here's the question. Why should they believe Barnabas? I mean, this is, a, this is a lot of risk here. Why should they believe Barnabas? Look back in chapter 4, verse 36. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of the encouragement, son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Joseph was his name at first, and he had been in the church long enough, the apostles gave him a nickname. And his nickname had to do with his character. And his demeanor and his actions and his character were such to the point they called him a son of encouragement. Now, let's back up. What did he do when he got to Antioch? It says he encouraged them. What was he called by the apostles after they got to know him? They didn't call him Joseph anymore. After this, his name is never used. They always called him Barnabas, the son of encouragement. So he had a reputation of being the son of encouragement. So when he stood up for the apostle, for the Saul of Tarsus, who later became the apostle Paul, when he stood up for Saul, they didn't have any doubt. That Saul was the real deal only because Barnabas said so. Now that's something. And because Barnabas was willing to put his name on the line and encourage Saul of Tarsus, the apostle Paul was made possible. Now, let's go all the way down here. International missions. Barnabas was part of it, a, a missionary team with Barnabas and Saul. That was before Saul became Paul. It was Barnabas taking the lead. That was the missionary team, international missions. But it didn't start there, did it? You say, well, it started when he took the time to be a personal encourager for Saul and deal with one individual, not the crowds, not the international Global outreach, one individual, it was worth it for him to say, I'm in your corner and I support what you're doing. But oh, it gets even better than that. Watch this. Barnabas started all this because he was willing to invest in local outreach. He sold some land and laid the money at the apostles' feet. No global missions going on then. No outreach going on out in the region. The only thing that was happening that he could see was what was going on in Jerusalem. Local outreach. Local reaching of people. He believed in it. And he invested in it. And when he invested in it, then God started using it. And little by little, God used it to expand it to where it ended up with global, international missions all over the world. 
So Barnabas reached the world. But where did he start? Right here. Right here. Is there anything before we go into the business meeting? If not, we'll go ahead.